Hi, this is Fish and welcome to Fish Picks. For a while now, I've been hearing about how some lock sporters polish their picks to a mirror finish, but why? Is it just about the bling? Or does this attention to detail actually improve picking performance? Let's find out. I think perhaps I've been a little spoilt up to this point because most of the picks I use on a regular basis have come from Law Lock Tools or Multipick, and they're tumbled and finished to such a high degree that they're good to be used right out of the packaging. But all this changed this week when I received my much anticipated 18,000th gem from Peterson's. This pick came highly recommended as a solution to working with some of the narrow and paracentric keyways that European pickers like myself tend to encounter quite often. I already have a 25,000th pick from Peterson and it's smooth to the touch and it didn't require any modifications, but this new pick felt more like a blank rather than a finished product. It was rough to the touch and had discoloration, presumably from the heat of the cutting process. Under a microscope, the evidence of machining was evident, and I'm told that these imperfections could interfere with the security pins and lead to confusing feedback during the picking process. Is this typical? Perhaps I was sent a unit that slipped past quality control, I'm not sure, but this presented the perfect opportunity to test whether polishing a pick improves its performance. Now, I know that this was an N equals 1 experiment and was highly subjective, which I'll come back to later, but I wanted to have some way of comparing how this pick performed before and after the polishing process. So I set up my Sparrow's revolver so that the first four chambers of each key position were populated with a mixture of different pinning patterns. The first four had standard driver pins. The second alternated with standards and spools. The third had a mix of standard and serrated pins. And the last had a couple of mushroom pins in between the standard drivers. I allowed myself five minutes of picking time for each key position. And if I hadn't secured an open in that time, I'd make a note that this was a failed attempt and then use the key to turn to the next chamber and start the timer again. I repeated this cycle five times for a total of 20 picking opportunities. Using the unpolished gem, I secured 13 opens and failed on seven occasions. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to scrutinize the numbers in more detail, but there were a couple of clear patterns. I obviously struggled most with the spools and mushrooms, and my picking time varied wildly from one cycle to the next. These inconsistencies, however, are likely to reflect my limited skill and experience. The rough edges of the pick might well exacerbate this issue, though, and I certainly noticed that the feedback was harder to read than it would have been with my usual short hook, because of the friction I assume between the pins and the pick profile. So, with this baseline established, it was time to try and bring this pick to a mirror finish. Having researched the various techniques used to polish picks, I gathered the following materials together. A mixture of increasingly fine grit wet and dry sanding papers, a cup of water, a thick book, a bar of metal polishing paste, and a Dremel with an assortment of buffing wheels. It's worth noting that this was already a thin pick and the polishing process does involve removing a small amount of material from the profile, so this process needed to be done with a delicate touch to avoid weakening the tool. I started by folding a sheet of 600 grit paper between the pages of a book. The idea here is that it allows you to assert downward pressure whilst drawing the pick in and out of the folded sanding paper and avoiding risking stabbing your hand on the forward motion, a trick that others have learned the hard way and I was happy to adopt. Then, having wet the pick, it was just a case of being a little patient and making even strokes along the whole length of the pick. After every 20 or 30 strokes, I re-wet the pick and repeated the process. And I did this for a few minutes before switching to a finer 1000 grit paper and then again to a 1500 grit paper. Each time, I ensured that I addressed the edges in turn as well, rolling the pick to different angles to create a smoother transition between the planes. 
Finally, it was time to apply metal polishing paste to the profile and then bring it to a mirror finish using a buffing wheel from my Dremel accessory set. I placed the pick on a smooth marble base rather than secure it in a vise because I didn't want to risk bending the pick. And an additional benefit of having the pick lie flat on a stone surface is that it would dissipate some of the heat that might have been created during the polishing process, which could, I suppose, weaken the steel's integrity. I'm not a metallurgist and this might have been undue caution on my part, but I figured better to be safe than sorry. The end result was a really smooth mirror finished pick. It looks lovely and when I re-examined under the microscope the difference was pronounced, although I could still see some imperfections here and there. How would it fare with the revolver challenge though? Did it now have greater utility? As soon as I started picking, I could feel a significant difference in the amount of feedback I was able to determine. So I started the timer and went through the same five cycles of the revolver, noting my times and when I failed to secure an open. This time I managed to achieve an open on 17 of the 20 attempts within the five minute window afforded by the test. That's a 20% improvement on my pre-polished performance, so it would seem that that half an hour of time invested was well worth the effort. That having been said, I think it's worth lingering on the idea that this finding is in no way definitive. For a start, as a newcomer to Locksport, my picking record can be erratic, even on the best of days. One minute I can be popping locks open with ease and the next my master lock feels like Fort Knox. So this alone could account for the improved performance. I might have just been on a lucky streak. In addition, the fact that I had picked each chamber five times just a few hours before could have primed me to do better in the later trials because I'd dialed in my sensitivity to the pinning and feedback produced by this specific lock. Although I do pick this every day so I'm already rather familiar with it. Nonetheless, I can say definitively that the pick now feels better to work with and I've gone on to test this new and improved profile with other locks in my collection and with equally encouraging results. So I think I'd summarise this little experiment as follows. The process of polishing a pick is simple, inexpensive, relatively quick and produces a tool which provides the best chance of achieving an open, all other factors being equal. I'll definitely be going back to some of my other picks and applying this process to them. So do you polish your picks? And if so, do you have any tips which I've missed here? Please do leave a comment so we can all learn together. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button before you leave. And until next time, take good care.